My next guest is Jim DeMessa. He's the Chief Executive Officer of Emerald Health Pharmaceuticals. Jim, welcome. Thank you. Great to, great to be here. Yeah, great to have you here. Uh, Jim, the Emerald Health Pharmaceuticals sort of empire is, uh, is something that um, takes a bit of understanding. Yep. And I'm wondering if you could just put that all together for us as a way to kick this interview off and, and that way and, and, and drill down to where you sit in that universe. And then we'll start talking about that. Sure, I think that's a great place to start because it, it can get complicated. There is a, a group. There are a group of Emerald companies, which uh, Emerald Health Pharmaceuticals, the company that that I lead, is one of those companies. All of these Emerald companies are partially owned by a, a private company called Emerald Health Sciences. And so you may have heard, and I think you have uh, heard of Emerald Health Therapeutics, for example. They are a Canadian-based company that is involved in the traditional or, or, or somewhat traditional cannabinoid-based technology of growing and extracting cannabinoid molecules like cannabidiol or CBD, all the way to the companies like ours, which are science-based, pharmaceutical and biotechnology-based, which use cannabinoid molecules as a starting point, but then use, as we term it, use the unique convergence of science, biology, and cannabinoids to create completely new molecules that have effects that the basic cannabinoid molecules like CBD don't have and that could potentially treat diseases. And then there are other companies like ours in the Emerald family of companies that have pharmaceutical-based or, or nutraceutical-based products all based on cannabinoids, but different different uh, aspects of cannabinoids, if you will. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so your particular focus is Emerald Health Pharmaceuticals, correct? And, and what sort of product project product pipeline do you guys offer? Well, first of all, we are a private company. So unlike some of the other Emerald companies, which are public, like the one I mentioned, Emerald Health Therapeutics is a public company in Canada. We're a private company in the U.S. We're based in San Diego. And uh, we have molecules. Our, our founding scientists took, they were looking at natural products, not cannabinoids initially, but natural products to, to try and create biologic effects in the body that could treat some serious diseases that currently have no cure. And they ended up finding that the cannabinoids were the perfect starting material. And so our technology is based on CBD, cannabidiol, and CBG, cannabigerol, that are manipulated scientifically and chemically to affect certain biologic pathways and receptors in the body that are validated for some serious diseases like multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and other diseases that currently have no cure. So our, to answer your question, our molecules, which are patented with composition of matter patents, because we are new molecules that are no longer CBD or CBG or the cannabinoid molecules, which can't be patented, but we have patented technology, patented molecules that can affect these biologic receptors and pathways in the body to treat multiple sclerosis with our lead molecule and another disease called systemic sclerosis, which is a, a rare uh, called orphan disease for people that know that terminology. And we've been granted orphan drug designation by the FDA and the, the EMA in Europe. And, and then, so systemic sclerosis is, a, is a, an autoimmune disease that, that there's no cure for as well. Our second product candidate is targeting Parkinson's disease which is 10 million people around the world suffer from Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease and Huntington's disease, another rare disease for which we've been granted orphan drug designation in the U.S. and Europe. So those are our four main targets for diseases, all of which have no cure, and two molecules that are targeting those diseases. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as a private company, I understand you're uh, raising capital through Regulation A+. Plus. Right. And that you are just weeks, a week away from closing that Regulation A offering. Is that because you have raised the maximum amount of $67.1 million? Not quite. We're getting close. We've raised, uh, we've raised almost that amount. But the main reason that we have to terminate this, and it's March 28th is the deadline, is because by SEC rules, you have a certain period of time before you 
you have to reapply for another Regulation A offering. So we're we're not sure whether we will apply because we have raised a significant amount of money as a as kind of a pre-IPO opportunity for individual investors. But right now we have to close this uh, on March 28th. So like you say, it's just a few days away, and we've been very successful so far because we're at the perfect time for a biotechnology company like ours to not only be able to show efficacy in those terrible diseases that I mentioned, but also to create significant value for shareholders because phase two clinical human clinical trials is where the value of these companies like ours can go up significantly. And we are now in phase two human clinical trials. So perfect timing for investors. Right. So that gives us, um, since we'll be publishing at the end of the day on March 26th, does, does that mean that the, that the viewers will have this weekend to sign up for the Reg A and that's it? It's closed this Sunday night at midnight? That's correct. Now, just to be clear, though, that, that, that means they have, somebody has to have a commitment to invest by that time, by midnight on Sunday night. They don't have to fund the investment at that moment. It can take several weeks to fund the investment investment and, 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 and even decide they change their mind. But, but we do have to have a commitment that by SEC regulations by Sunday night at midnight, the 28th. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's good to know. Uh, oftentimes the, uh, the complaint from our viewers is that the Reg A plus opportunity has closed by the time we bring it to their attention. At least this time we've got two days before it closes <laughs> for them. So hey. great. Yeah. Okay. One so other, then, one other now, thing about Sorry, one other thing, yeah. I just want to make sure it's clear, because I know you're in Canada. Uh, unfortunately, because of Canadian regulations, we can't, it's not open to Canadian investors. So we, 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 it's open to the rest of the world, but not Canadian investors, unfortunately. Well, rest assured, the, large, the larger portion of our uh, subscriber base is U.S.-based, so still the opportunity is there. Um, good for you. Um, let, let me ask you, what are you going to use all those funds for? Well, right now, as I mentioned, we're in phase two human clinical trials. And as many people know, those are expensive and, 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 and complicated efforts. And so most of our the, the funding that we're doing right now is to continue to advance our programs, the two that I've mentioned, into phase completing phase two and going into phase three human clinical trials, and then ultimately towards commercialization, approval and commercialization for those molecules. Okay, fantastic. And then the, so your plan is to actually do an IPO uh, onto the NASDAQ exchange or some one of the U.S. exchanges? Well, we're definitely setting our company up for an IPO. We, uh, with the Regulation A rules by the SEC, we can't comment on when or if we're do, we'll do that. But certainly uh, one of the areas of advice that we've gotten, if we're going to do a public offering, is once we start getting phase two data, Data. So that is our plan as we start to, to, to advance this, uh, this program into phase two and beyond, is to create liquidity for our investors by, uh, by doing some kind of a public offering or some kind of partnership deal with a large pharma company or whatever can create liquidity for our investors. In as, as lay terms as is possible, can you describe what the, what the similar, like to what extent is your molecule differentiated from its source cannabinoid uh, relative? And could you also perhaps briefly describe how it works to mitigate the effects of systemic sclerosis and mus muscular sclerosis? Yeah, sure. I mean, that's the fundamental uh, excitement that we have. As I mentioned, uh, starting with CBD, for example, if, if, if I had multiple sclerosis, I would probably take CBD because there are known health benefits anti-inflammatory benefits. I, it could probably help some of my symptoms, but it's not going to change the course or progression of this terrible disease of MS. The next step, for example, you may have heard of a company called GW Pharma, where they're treating some forms of epilepsy, rare forms of childhood epilepsy with CBD, high doses of CBD, and they're treating the symptoms. But again, it's not going to change the course of that disease, just like MS. Our molecules, because they have been changed very specifically, they actually affect receptors and pathways in the body that are specific for treating diseases like 
multiple sclerosis and systemic sclerosis and Parkinson's disease and so forth. And so if I were to take that molecule, it actually not only in, in our studies to date shows that it stops the progression of the disease, so the disease gets no worse, but it also reverses the course of the disease and potentially ideally even cure the disease if we can prove that in clinical trials. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, all right. So, what is the uh, what is the expectation in terms of the timing of um, from where you are now to getting to a potential? Uh, I guess it's an e EUA from the from the FDA as a result we of would, successful phase three trials. Yeah, that would be an NDA, a new drug application, and and we're still several years away from that. But again. For investors, it's important to know, I, I mentioned GW Pharma, for example, when back way back in 2013, when they were at the stage of development where we are, they were a, a, a company, public company at the time, and their valuation was in the few hundred million dollar range, kind of where we are. And then they got phase two results. They're still eight years away from commercialization and NDA, as you mentioned, but their, their market value went from a couple couple hundred million to over two billion in less than six months. So a very significant increase long before they got NDA approval. They just got NDA approval in the last couple of years, and now they've been bought out by a pharmaceutical company for $7.2 billion. So again, that's the kind of value creation that can occur, especially at phase two, which is where we are right now. Wow, fantastic. Jim, I want to thank you for your time today. We're going to follow the story with interest. Congratulations on your Reg A Plus offering, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. It was great to talk to you. Yeah, bye for now.